Good morning, happy Easter. Christ has risen from the dead, hallelujah. My name is Reverend Dr. Martha Jacobs. Welcome to worship with us at First Congregational Church in Chappaqua, New York. We are so glad that you are here with us today. We hope that you will, it will be a fulfilling and a spiritual experience that will bring you closer to God especially as we go through this challenging time in our world together. If you'd like to follow along in our service, you can go to our website, fcc chappaquaorg where you will find a link to a PDF of our service. Now, during our service today, we will be sharing communion. So I invite you at some point to get some bread or crackers or something similar and place it on a plate. Take water, apple juice, coffee, tea, or anything you have not yet had to drink today and pour some into a cup and put it aside with the bread, perhaps covering both with a napkin until we come to the time in our service when we will celebrate communion together. If there are others with you, please have separate cups from which to drink. My dear ones, there will be times during our service for quiet meditation. I invite you to use those times to be in prayer 
and have your own communion with God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. God has told us that where two or more are gathered, God will be with us, and our spirits will connect as we worship together no matter where we are, whether we're in Chappaqua or in Somers, in Pleasantville, Yorktown Heights, or even beyond our county borders or our state borders, all are welcome to worship with us. As the United Church of Christ reminds us, no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here, both in person and virtually. This morning, our Minister of Music, Keith Robillard, has once again provided wonderfully recorded music for our worship today. We are so grateful for his talents and the technology that has enabled him to do so. We also have two special pieces of music that we will be sharing, one a solo by Dave Bickler called Rise, and the other a piece for which Jonathan Rydell wrote the lyrics and Keith will be singing for us called A Hallelujah. You know, I'm so thankful for the wonders of technology that enable both uh, Keith and, um, and Dave to be here with us virtually. I also am thankful again for Bill Spade joining us today as our liturgist and a special thanks also to my spouse, Pat Yost, who's making sure that our service is being sent out and recorded so that we can post it later for those who are not able to join us this morning. So I invite us to take a couple of deep breaths and let us center ourselves as we enter this time for worship. Let us join together in singing in the garden. in our call to worship. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. Christ, our morning star, has risen. Let there be no doubt that death has lost its sting. Christ, come among us with your warmth and light as we open ourselves to your living presence. Come, let us rejoice that Christ has overcome death. Let us worship and sing praises to our living God. Please join in Christ the Lord is risen today. Oh 
Good morning, everyone. It's wonderful to be here. The mic is not turned on. Oh, I'm sorry. Turn it on. Okay. Got it. It's okay. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. It's wonderful to be here. Thank you, Martha and Pat, and thank you to all of you working so hard. Uh, please join me now for the unison invocation in the Lord's Prayer. We rejoice, awesome God, that you have raised Jesus Christ from the dead. We are forever changed by your overly abundant grace and love. New life blossoms where dead hopes were buried. Help us to see our world anew and be open to your radical inclusion of all. May our hearts be open to being more like Jesus Christ, our crucified and risen Savior, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. When we gather together, we do so to strengthen our faith and our community. When we gather together to confess our shortcomings, we do so knowing that God's grace is infinite and that we need only confess with our hearts and God will forgive. Therefore, let us come with open hearts and minds to confess our sins and to seek forgiveness from the one who loves us more than we can ever comprehend. Please join me in the unison prayer of confession. Dear God, we recognize we are wayward and contrary and stumble when we are trying to journey with Jesus. Sometimes we can't keep up with him, while other times we race ahead and don't listen to his warnings. We are like children on this journey. With the difficulties facing us these days, as we need to keep our social distance and are separated from our families and those we love, we need your help to open the gates of our hearts. Help us to trust you as we seek to enter the temple with Jesus. Please forgive us as we come to you with our silent prayers and confessions. Please take a moment for silent and personal prayer. Father, we thank you so much for this beautiful morning to celebrate Easter, the rising of Jesus Christ. We thank you for the hope and promise that that rising represents. We pray that you would draw our hearts closer to you, to your spirit, and draw us closer to each other. Thank you for Martha and for Keith and for Jonathan and Jana, for Pat the staff for all of their work for us. We pray that you would bless them. Also be with those who are working so hard for health care services, to minister to all of those in need. Thank you for their time and effort. Please join me in the unison prayer of confession. I'm sorry. Uh, from there, let's go to the words of assurance. So. <laughs> To all who seek forgiveness through confession of sin and commitment to change, God responds with mercy and grace. God does not give up on us when we are discouraged or forget that we are God's hands and feet here on earth. Jesus walks with us, empowering us to become the disciples we are called to be. Praise God, we are forgiven. Thankful for forgiveness and for our church community. Now let us virtually greet each other with God's peace. May the peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. you. And please, on Facebook, go ahead and 
enter a piece to all of those who are joined in, uh, we'd love to hear from you. We are now going to hear virtually from Dave Bickler, who is going to be singing for us a piece entitled Rise, which is so appropriate for this morning. There's a peace I've come to know Though my heart and flesh may fail There's an anchor to my soul I can say it is well Jesus is overcome and the grave is overwhelmed. The victory is won. He is risen from the dead. And I will rest when he calls my name. No more sorrow, no more pain. And I will rise when it calls my name. No more sorrow, no more pain. I will rise on eagle's wings before my God. Fall on my knees and rise. I will 
That was beautiful. Thank you to Dave and Keith. For our Old Testament reading this morning, it is Psalm 118, uh, verses 1 to 2, and then 19 to 24. The psalm, again, is a song uh, that David created. And it contains a very important prophecy about the Messiah. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. Love endures forever. Let Israel say, his love endures forever. Open for me the gates of righteousness. I will enter and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord through which the righteous may enter. I will give you thanks, for you answered me. You have become my salvation. The stone the builders rejected has become the capstone. The Lord has done this, and it is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. And our Gospel reading this morning is from the Gospel of John, chapter 20, verses 1 through 18. I invite you to either follow along or perhaps close your eyes and listen for something new God might be wanting you to hear from our reading this morning. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciple set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there, and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up into a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who reached the tomb first, also went in, and he saw and believed. For they did not yet understand the scripture, that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary, Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I don't know where they have laid him. When she said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she didn't know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? For whom are you looking? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to, di to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. My dear friends, here end our two readings. May God add a special blessing to the reading and hearing of all of God's words.
Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Please join me in prayer. O oh, holy God, this is the day that you have made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. May the words that I offer this morning be words that people need to hear in this time of difficulty and such stress and the unknown. May we but know that you are with us. Amen. Jesus first appeared to one who is on the margins the margins of society, a woman. Jesus had accepted her as one of his followers, and some would say that she was a disciple. But aside from Jesus and perhaps the other disciples, in the wider community, Mary was an outcast and existed on the margins. So she is one who has no voice. And yet, and yet, she is the one who returned to the empty tomb, perhaps hoping to find someone who saw whoever it was that took Jesus' body away. Or maybe, maybe she just needed to be near the last place that he was. Or maybe she was trying to remember all the things that he had taught her, including loving herself as well as her neighbor. Loving yourself is a hard thing for most of us to do, but for someone who lives on the margins and was not an accepted and valued member of her community, it is even more difficult. You know, right now, I think a lot of us feel like we are living on the margins of society. We are self-quarantining, we are staying six feet away from each other, even from those in our own families who have tested positive for COVID-19 and are remaining at home. They are staying away so that they don't pass on the virus. Families are unable to be with loved ones who are hospitalized for fear of spreading the virus. Parents who are working from home and also ensuring that their children are doing their schoolwork are exhausted. And of course, we are not able to gather as communities of faith to celebrate together on this Easter Sunday. We don't have the opportunity to be compassionate with each other face to face and help others in the same way that we have in the past. We are still trying to figure things out. So perhaps we are feeling a bit marginalized. Quite frankly, I know that I have been feeling that way when going to the grocery store, people are not looking at each other. We're basically faceless people with masks on. Our identities are hidden. We can't even smile at someone or exchange pleasantries while waiting in the checkout line. Six feet does not make for an easy conversation. It's hard for us to imagine a light at the end of this tunnel. And perhaps that is what the disciples and Mary were feeling. <clears throat> perhaps they too could not see a light at the end of a very dark tunnel for them. After having watched the one that they loved and had placed all of their faith and hope in be crucified right in front of them had to be devastating. They were also living in fear behind locked doors. They were fearful for their lives and they didn't know what their future might hold. Well, sounds a bit like us right now, doesn't it? But they also feel helpless. They feel helpless because they could not stop what happened. And I think we too feel helpless to some degree that we can't stop this virus right now, although we are doing our best to slow it down by continuing to self-quarantine and maintain social distancing. You know, as, as I read the passage this year, I wondered, I wondered why Jesus had chosen to reveal himself to Mary, to one who was among the least of these. 
She was on the far margins of society, not only because she was a woman, but she was an unmarried woman who did not have a husband to support her. And in society at that time, that was definitely make, made one an outcast. But Mary Magdalene is one of the few women that go through almost the whole of all four gospels. She is one of the few threads that ties everything together for us. As I've said on prior Easter Sundays, the reason I know that the resurrection happened is that the gospel writers do not change the facts. They do not replace Mary with one of the male disciples so that a man is the one to whom Jesus reveals himself. Because you see, for a woman to be the one to whom Jesus appears was scandalous at that time. After all, Jesus was talking alone with a woman in a garden, something that was forbidden in their culture. You know, the early Christians must have been shocked when they heard that Jesus appeared to a woman and a woman with a shady past as well. So my dear ones, I do believe that Mary saw and spoke with Jesus after he died. Now the fact that Jesus chose to reveal himself to a woman who was considered on the margins of society, well, you know, if, if you think about it, I mean, isn't that just like Jesus? Isn't that just like Jesus? To challenge the status quo, to challenge the carefully held system of oppression of the, of the least of these, that he had been fighting for to change during his whole three years of ministry. The ones with the small voices, the ones that people don't want or feel they need to listen to, is the one is the one that Jesus chooses, and he chooses to reveal himself to Mary. That is important for us to hear because she is one of the people on the margins and among the least of these, and she has no voice. And yet her voice rings loudly, loudly that she has seen Jesus. Jesus has given her the message to deliver to the disciples and to the world. It is vitally important to for us to remember how Jesus acted and continues to act in our world. You know, it seems that Mary is able to recall what Jesus has taught them. She knew in her heart as much as she wanted to stay there in the garden with Jesus. No matter how much she wanted to, she could not. She knew, she knew that she needed to let the disciples and us know that Jesus had risen as he had promised. She lets us know that Jesus will remain with us, guiding us through the difficult paths ahead. Mary brought us the message of the rebirth of love. The rebirth of love. She also helps us to remember that while this pandemic has taken things away from us, what it has not taken away from us is our faith and our calling as ones who are here on earth to be God's hands and feet. She is reminding us that no matter how small a voice we have, we have the capacity to do whatever we can to help each other, even from afar. Because as one who was on the margins of society, Mary was able to step out and proclaim that Jesus had risen. She reminds us that at the heart of all the Gospels is the promise that God is with us at all times and through all the ups and downs of our lives. God is present in our joys and in our sorrows, in our frustrations and in our accomplishments, in our fears and when we experience peace. And we know, but we can't always remember, we know that God is present with us, especially in these difficult times, as we experience so much loss, so much death, and so much grief. Through the resurrection, God also shows us that light is more powerful than darkness. Love is stronger than hate. And Christ triumphs over all things, including death. 
My dear friends, it's ironic that this pandemic has occurred during Easter because Easter reminds us of hope and what is to come. Easter reminds us that we are encompassed by love when we open the windows of our souls. There are so many opportunities for new life, new wonders, new possibilities. I mean, Mary was willing to open her eyes to new possibilities and was able, therefore, to stop and see Jesus and not just return home as the disciples did. Her heart was open because of her love for Jesus. My dear ones, we too need to open our hearts to what God can do. Like Jesus revealing himself after his death, to a woman. Easter morning turns the world on its ear. Jesus reminds us to love one another just as he loved and loves us. And that is something we can still do, even while maintaining our social distancing and staying home. New opportunities await us as we make connections and find new ways to be in community like the way we helped the Northern Westchester Community Center's food pantry when we donated more than 1,200 pounds of food last Thursday. They were so excited and grateful to receive it, as I'm sure were the people who actually got to take the food home and hopefully will be able to enjoy it today. And so each Thursday between now and whenever the uh, things get better for our communities, we will continue to provide an opportunity for our wider community to help us help them by collecting food every Thursday. Now these new opportunities, while they may not necessarily be ideal, I mean, who knows what other ideas they may lead us to. They are helping us to realize just how interconnected and interdependent we are on each other and that we cannot thrive by ourselves. And it reminds us that living on this earth at this time requires that we find ways to celebrate life, hope, and joy, knowing, knowing that we have a connection to the one who used someone who was on the margins to deliver the most amazing news that would change our world. Christ has risen. Amen. My dear friends, we now come to the time where we offer the prayers of our people. Uh, and as usual, I will begin and then there will be an opportunity uh, for you to offer your prayers either silently or aloud. God hears both. And uh, then I will close our prayer together. So let us take a deep breath. And may we join together in prayer. Oh, holy God, these days it's sometimes hard for us to imagine that Christ has risen and that Christ continues to walk among us, and even in these most difficult times. And yet, God, Christ does walk among us through all of the emergency workers, through the hospital workers, doctors, nurses, aides, through those in grocery stores and those in hardware stores. And those in restaurants who are enabling us to continue to find sustenance for ourselves, putting themselves at risk. And God, we know that that's what Jesus did. And so we offer ourselves as well in whatever ways we can to help our community both near and far. So Holy God, we come before you today with our prayers of thanksgiving and prayers of concern. Oh God, there are things on our hearts, some we will speak aloud and some that will remain unspoken. But nonetheless, dear God, we know, we know that you hear them from the margins of society to the deepest, deepest grief that we feel.
Christ be with us. Help us as we get through these days, weeks, however long it is. Give our leaders the knowledge that they need and help them to help us contain this virus and have it be gone from our societies. God, you have heard our prayers, both those unspoken and those spoken aloud. There are no secrets from you. Our prayers are our own, and we offer them in the name of the risen Christ. Amen. My dear friends, there are all kinds of ways that people give of their time, talent, and financial resources to the work of our church, both locally and in the wider world, as Dave Bickler beautifully did just a few minutes ago. We seek to help people both near and far, and we recognize the financial landscape is shifting for everyone during these strange days. If you are able to give with us this time, we would greatly appreciate your support of the work of our church, and you will find a place on our website, fcc-chappaqua.org, to make a donation. No amount is too small. We are so grateful for whatever you might be able to give. And by the way, we are continuing to check our mail one, at least once a week, so do feel free to mail in your pledges or your contributions to, to support our worshipful work. And I'm so grateful that we have such a wonderful staff and such a dedicated staff, and Chris and Angela with XM with Playcare, and Wilbur, who is keeping our building going, and certainly Keith, uh, as we move forward seeking to continue to serve this community. You know, we have so much to be grateful for, and so as we listen to a new version of a hallelujah written by Jonathan Rydell and performed by Keith Robillard, please consider not only what you might be able to give to us, but this day especially, I invite you to consider all of the things, all of the things for which you have to be thankful. A man in Wuhan died alone His wife was trapped outside the dome She said, I'm trying to get my kisses to the young But he sweat so hard and his throat grew tight He held her memory through the night Till his final sigh
I can't see your mouth, but I hear your sighs. I see the laughter in your eyes. I feel the breath of love still passing through you. And the mask you wear is not to hide. It's to protect and to provide. To cleanse and amplify your The wind is warm, the sky is red, the sun is rising far ahead, his holy light comes piercing right into the young. And the sparrows bathe in the morning dew, and history turns a page or two, and the world begins anew. Please join me now in our doxology. join me in our unison prayer of consecration. Loving God, help us this week to accept that you show us your amazing love for us as we place our faith in you, we place our confidence in the Spirit's power, and we place our hope in the ongoing work of Christ Church. Accept our gifts and our gratitude. Amen. We didn't change the prayer of consecration. <laughs> Sorry about that. So this is our opportunity. We're going to go into communion now and we're going to sing Let Us Break Bread Together. And at this time, if you have not yet gone and gotten your bread and something to drink, please do so now.
Dear friends, this is an open table. All are welcome to our table, those who have been here often, those who have not been here in a long time, and those who have never been here before. All are welcome. This is a time when we gather to remember that Jesus is our friend and our teacher, and one who loves us very much and gave his life for us. We share bread and cup together as a way to remember Jesus and to be renewed by Jesus' Spirit. My dearest ones, the Lord is with you and also with you. Let us lift up our hearts. We lift them up to God. Let us give thanks to God Most High. It is right to give God thanks and praise. Beloved ones, we have acknowledged before God that we depend on God for our lives, that we are sorry for our sins, that we long to be reconciled in the peace of Christ, and that we are ready to turn around and walk in a new way of love. So come now, come to the table of Jesus, where he presides, our most gracious host. Jesus calls us and waits for us, eager to heal us, to persuade us of his love, to welcome us, to welcome us with an unconditional welcome. So come to this table where Jesus feeds his friends with wonderful gifts and from which we always, always arrive with a blessing. Let us pray. O oh God of mystery and promise, you invite us to discover you in the intimate places of ourselves and our lives. You invite us to discover you within the complexities of our humanity, in passionate and tender loving, in struggle and pain, in confusion and unknowing, in flashes of insight and wisdom. You also call us beyond ourselves to places of imagination, beyond the silent stars in the deep rhythms of the ocean, in the unending cycles of day and night, seasons of life and death. So this day with angels and archangels, with saints and ancestors, with the seas and the earth and the sky, with animals and birds, with our friends and those unknown to us, with all creation we join in your unending glory, saying, Holy, 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 God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of our Lord. Hosanna. Hosanna in the highest. We praise you, dear God, that in Jesus you have revealed yourself to us, making known the wonder and richness of our humanity. Oh God, we give you thanks for his self-giving love, his healing touch his vulnerability, and his gentleness. For the sacrifice that triumphs over sin and death and makes all things, all things new again. And so, washing my hands because I am sharing communion with Bill and Pat this morning. Before Jesus gave up his life, he shared himself with his friends, and he lifted up the bread, and I invite you now to lift up the bread or crackers or whatever it is that you have at home. He gave this to his disciples, saying, This is my body, broken for you. Do this, and remember me, and place the bread back down. And then I invite you also to pick up the cup that you are using, 
So after they had eaten, he took the cup, gave thanks for it, and gave it to them, saying, This is the new covenant that is poured out for you, so that sins may be forgiven. Please put your cup back on your table, and I invite you to place your palm, hands, palms down, over the elements as we bless them together. Come now, Spirit of God, upon these gifts of bread and cup that earth has given and human hands have made. By our eating and drinking, fill us with the joy of Christ. Keep us persevering in his way, honoring ourselves, serving our neighbor, and praising your name. Touch us with your gentle creativity and fire us with longing for a new age of justice and of peace. Amen. My dear friends, these are the gifts of God for the people of God. All is now ready. So I invite you to take a piece of bread and share it with those who are with you. Bill? And hear these words as you ingest, whether it's a cracker or bread. My dear ones, this is the bread of life. Now, if you have more than one person, you might want to have separate cups that you pour some of the liquid into to drink, which I am going to do for Bill. And Bill, come on up, and you can get yours while I'm at the other end of the table. And Pat. My dear ones, as you drink this, hear these words. This is the cup of blessing. And I invite you now to please join me in our prayer of thanksgiving. Thank you, God, for life in the spirit of Jesus, for gladness in this bread and cup, for love that cannot die, for peace the world cannot give, for joy in the company of friends, for the splendors of creation, and for the mission of justice you have made our own. Give us the fruits of this holy communion, oneness of heart, love for neighbors, forgiveness of enemies, the will to serve you every day, and life that never ends. In the name of the risen Christ, we pray. Amen. Alleluia. Christ is risen. And now, my dear ones, I would invite you to join us in our final hymn, Alleluia, Sing to Jesus.
My dear ones, our Director of Christian Education, Jonathan Rydell, has posted a message for our youth and young at heart on our Facebook page. And Jonna Peters, our Sunday school teacher for our youngest at heart, has posted a message as well. You know, I am just so thankful to God for these two amazing people who have our youngest at heart in their hearts as they teach them about our amazing God. We invite you to watch them either today or sometime during the week. And I also want to pause and give special thanks to Susie Sugar, Jen Frawley, and Wilbur Diaz for arranging our flowers so beautifully this morning. And believe it or not, they did it while maintaining social distancing. So thank you so much for joining us today. It has been, my dear ones, a true blessing to be with you virtually. And I hope that you have found spiritual sustenance to help you get through whatever is happening for you and your family. I also hope you will join us next Sunday as we continue our journey with Jesus and with God and the Holy Spirit. Please, dear ones, remember that no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here at First Congregational Church in Chappaqua. And now, my dearest ones, as Christ birth burst forth from the tomb, may new life, may new life burst forth from us and show itself in acts of love and healing to a hurting world. And may the same Christ who lives forever and is the source of our new life keep your hearts rejoicing and grant you peace this day and always. Amen. <laughs>